Uh, we're jumping from 25,000 feet. We're going to free fall for about two minutes before we land, and I'm going to land without a parachute. I'm going to land and get up and walk away. No wingsuit, no parachute, no nothing. So how do you know you can do this? Um, I've been jumping for about 26 years. I have over 18,000 jumps. Um, I've worked on a lot of big projects where I've got to help with some engineering. And so all of that practice and all that training, basically my whole life has been built up for something like this. So that's a big drama. Everyone wants to know what we're going to land in. What I'm here to tell you is that we're going to land in something. I need to land on my back. Um, this device has been tested. We've been dropping stuff from helicopters from a thousand feet, a dummy that just like me, into this thing, and it catches it and it slows it down. And it's the G forces are right around four and a half to five G's. That's all for about one, one and a half seconds. You slow down over, and I slow down in roughly 150 feet. I mean, I think it'd be ridiculous to do something like this without being, you know, thinking about it and being nervous about doing something like this. I mean, I'm going to do something that's definitely out there that most people in the world would think is crazy. Um, but what I like about it is that if you, when you see all the science and all the math and all the engineering that goes in behind this thing, from a physics standpoint, I mean, we stop cars, race cars stop all the time. They weigh a lot more and they're going a lot faster and they stop in a short distance. So I'm applying some of those physics, basically, to see that this is possible. The absolute biggest variable in all this stuff is wind. Um, you saw when we're in this wind tunnel here and we're flying around, the wind is coming straight up. There's nothing pushing on us from the side. So as soon as you get that outside wind influence, it starts to push you. Now I have to counter it. So I have to put drag on one side to force myself to drive into the wind a little bit. And that wind changes in different layers all the way down. So just a little bit of wind, if it's blowing you know, 10 miles an hour, that's going to want to slide me at roughly 5 miles an hour away from the, where I'm trying to be. So I have to fight that and drive into the wind. So the wind is definitely my biggest uh, adversary on this jump. Does a uh, auto correct sometimes it the wrong way? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm on it with you, so but I want to get that too, so we can get that correct. Perfect. Got it. So then we'll see you on Friday. This project represents something for all of us about risk, about taking chances, about living fully, and it forces us to examine our own temperance in life and how impermanence and the temporary nature of life is real. And so for him to face that, and not just one day think about it, that he will die, that that's a real part of the conversation. We're planning to train his craft, his body, the structure of the environment and his mind to mitigate anything that could possibly go wrong. And if it does, he's prepared. <laughs> How was it? That was great. I didn't know it now.